you know what? I wasn't going to do it. I wasn't going to do it. And yet, it was there. Just right outside my, of my balcony, like straight to the north. Like beautiful view for me. And I had the telescope out. The comet is passing just outside my balcony. I just couldn't... Um, Lotabli. <laughs> I just couldn't help myself. I had to take a photo. So the thing is, I had my trusted Red Cat 51 at 250 millimeters out on the balcony photographing, and uh, unfortunately, I had the monochrome camera on it, meaning that I have to take four pictures to get one color image. And by photographing comments, it's a bit different. When we photograph like deep space objects, I just take these four images, I stack them and I process them separately and then I put them together into a single color image. The problem with comets is that I have to separate these into two different work processes. One is for the stars and one is for the comet because the comet and the stars don't really uh, travel together. The comet has its own orbit. So when I photograph these uh, one minute uh, images, like 120 of them or something for two hours, I get a very cool uh, time-lapse of the comet moving throughout my filters. But uh, that also presents me with the problem that I have to take and create four images for the stars and I have to create four images for the comet. Now, for me, that's a lot of work and I am pretty lazy and I have photographed comments before, so I don't know. I didn't feel like I really wanted to do that, but it was just outside my balcony and I figured why the hell not? So, oh, sorry. So what I did was I looked at some star charts and I kind of estimated roughly where it should be at uh, because it was on autopilot. I just estimated it to be at a location and I told my telescope to go to that location uh, at around 3 a.m. or something. I was sleeping, <laughs> uh, so I couldn't really see uh, that the framing was correct. And I told it, take two hours worth of photographs. And I knew that uh, uh, the galaxy or a galaxy was going to be into that frame. So I was left with the dilemma of actually wanting to use four images for the galaxy as well. That made me end up with 12 images that I have to separate separately work with. So four images for the stars, four images for the galaxy, and four images for the comet. Now that was a lot of work, it took me a few hours to process that, and also I live in borderline. This is a highly light polluted area. There's no, it's not really, the color images aren't really getting perfect. I mean, I am struggling with the, the light pollution. Now, the problem with comets is that you have to stack the photographs in two different ways. You have to stack the photos in uh, aspect to the comet, and then you have to stack one with the aspect to the stars. Because the stars and the comet are not moving together, you have to do that separately. And on top of that, I also had a small galaxy in my frame, and I really wanted that galaxy to be prominent in the photograph, so I had to create a stack that was specific to the galaxy as well leaving me with three different stacks and four images on each stack, meaning 12 different images that I had to process. That isn't optimal. I mean, if I had a color camera, I would have three different images and now I had 12. But just um, put up your sleeves, as we say in Sweden, and just do it. So I started processing the image. I did one for the stars. I did one for the comet and I did one for the galaxy and then I just put them together in Photoshop like you usually do when you are working with comets and the result is pretty good. As you can see this is the final image and uh, it's not that bad. I mean you can 
see that this is a borderline or a very highly light polluted area because of the artifacts in the image. There is a little bit of red now here and there. Um, but uh, if we just uh, remove the different layers, we should be able to see here is the comet layer. That's the galaxy layer. And then we have the stars layer. So there are two, three different images here with four, uh, like composed out of four images. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this, honestly. I mean, if we look at the comet, we can see that the colors are pretty good and uh, we have some sort of tail that blows out from the comet. Uh, not that prominent, it's a Borneo location, but still it's there. And if we zoom in too much, then we start seeing the problems with light pollution. This doesn't look very good. Uh, but the stars are quite alright. They do have some weird shapes to them. Maybe I stacked, uh, I added a weird stack a sub in it, but the colors are fine. And if we move away, move towards the galaxy part, we will have M64, I think it is, or maybe M63, the Sunflower Galaxy anyways, which was pretty cool that I got it into my frame like that. There you have it, the lemon or the comet lemon, which passes uh, every thousand years give or take um, so do if you have the opportunity to go out and have a look at it do so even if you are in a highly light polluted area you will be able to see it using uh, simple binoculars it's not that impressive it's a fuzzy ball up in the sky but it might be cool to see it with the kids or just go out and and explore the skies on your own so yeah that was it for this video. I hope <laughs> you might have enjoyed it a little bit. And if you did, do give it a like. It helps me out a lot. And if you want to see more of my content, astrophotography from a highly light polluted area amongst astrophotography out in the field, in the dark forests, uh, with my adventures out there, do subscribe. And if you have something to say, do write that down in the comment section. And I'll see you next video. Right? Bye now.